Welcome back to the channel and welcome back to my 4XV Yamaha R1. Now, I suspect most of you know I've got this bike, but not all of you may not know I've got this bike because I sort of introduced this as part of another video. I've sold my KH ESXR, beautiful bike. I hope I'm not going to regret, I probably will regret selling that at some point, but uh, I've bought myself an original R1. Now I say original, this is the 4XV, which is the first R1 they made, but it's actually a 1999 model. The R1 came out in 98. So this is like the second year of manufacture, but of that original machine, you know, of that original 4XV machine. So this is an original R1. Um, I've got plans for this bike. This is going to be a bike which is going to get given away on the channel. So this is uh, not given away, but sold with tickets. You know, it's going to be a ticket competition where you can win this machine and you'll pay a couple of quid for a ticket. But anyway, I'll, I'll give a bit more on that later on. I don't know too much details on that anyway, but just to let you know, that will be happening. But the plan with this bike is going to be, we are going to do a few jobs on it because it needs a few little jobs on it. Chain and sprockets need replacing. I want to take all the lower parts of the fairing off have a look under the fairing, you know, do a few sort of maintenance related jobs. It's not going to be a full restoration. Those people saying, oh, don't let it turn into a Ducati. You've got a ZXR to restore. It's not going to be a restoration. This is going to be just a bit of a clean up. I know I've said that before, but just a little bit of a clean up and do the essential jobs, you know. Then we're going to do some comparisons on this machine. There's a tractor coming now. Do you mind? You're making a video here. We were also going to record a video comparing this original R1 to the latest R1 or the last R1. So we're going to be doing that as well. But uh, this video is all about having a first ride on this machine. I just want to sort of talk you through how this feels compared to all the new modern bikes I ride all the time. This bike cost me three and a half thousand pound, which I thought was absolutely incredible. I didn't realise you could buy these bikes. I've always wanted one of these. I remember when these came out. I mean, there was a lot of fuss. You know, this was a game changer when this machine came out in 98. Here's a little bit of a, of a montage for you on the R1 and what this bike means to people and to me. Roll it, Chopsy. Apart. Come off um, first slip mode, don't it? Bye bye, Greg. Go on, Dot's keeping up. In 1998, Yamaha unleashed a game changer onto the motorcycle world the Yamaha R1. This revolutionary machine was not just a bike, it was a statement of engineering excellence and performance. With a liquid-cooled 998cc inline-4 engine producing a staggering 150 horsepower, the R1 set a new benchmark for sports bike performance. Its lightweight and compact design allowed for incredible agility and handling, making it a force to be reckoned with on both the streets and the track. The Yamaha R1 didn't just push boundaries, it shattered them. Its cutting edge technology and relentless performance pushed the limits of what was thought possible in a production motorcycle. Riders around the world were left in awe of its capabilities and performance. The Yamaha R1 wasn't just a bike, it was a revolution. It redefined what a sports bike could be and set a new standard of performance and excitement. Even today, its legacy lives on, inspiring a new generation of riders to chase the thrill of the open road. I actually wasn't riding. When, when these first came out is when I wasn't riding, so there's a little period in my life when my kids were babies or I gave up motorcycles for probably 10 years. And it was during that 10 years that this these bikes came out. I think right at the sort of beginning, I still have quite a lot of interest in bikes when these came out. Greg actually bought one of these. He bought a blue one. 
I don't know if, I think it was a 98. He bought an original 98 when it came out. He's going to be riding this, so this is going to bring back some real fond memories when we do the comparison. Oh, bollocks. I keep forgetting. I've got a bloody alarm on this bike. It's a, I've got to rem one of the jobs be removing this bloody alarm. Oh, look, everyone's running over because I'm stealing this motorcycle. What a waste of time they are. Let's fire up. Oh, it's quite hot today. <laughs> He's making excuses for it already. Yeah, it's okay. No, ch got choke, of course, on this. Shouldn't need any choke. Not been here long. Remember the summer? We had two days in the summer where it was about 30 degrees plus. Today's one of those days. It's absolutely scorching today. First thing you notice with this is look at the size of the rear end. Look at the width of that seat. Look how well padded that seat, even the pillion seat is reasonable isn't it? You've got so much room, you know if I, if I were to take the seat off, you've got room for your sandwiches, you could carry some luggage in there, I mean that's the thing with older bikes, you get so much more storage and I've got a lot of time for that, I like a bigger rear end, I mean I've got a big rear end myself so I fit on the back of that and uh, yeah I think this still, still looks great today, I love the little twin twin lights it's got all the original indicators this one's even still got the original sort of fuel stickers and stuff that sort of stuff all that original stuff which a lot of people take off it's still got all that original stuff on it so uh, and the first thing you notice with this is because it's obviously carved it's not fuel injected there's you know, this bike is 100 percent analog there's no electronics on this it's not even fuel injection but because it's carved the throttle response is instantaneous now compared to ride-by-wire bikes, that throttle is instantaneous. So that's like the first thing you notice is, wow, how responsive it is. The bike has covered 26,000 miles. Well, almost 27 at 26,908. So almost, almost 27,000 miles. It's 25 years old. But it's obviously been looked after in that time. Maybe it's even had some panel, maybe it's even been painted or something, you know, but it's very good condition. One thing you notice pulling away is the clutch bite is right at the end of the lever. So I need to check the clutch. I think the clutch could be uh, on its last legs, perhaps, or the bite is just very far out, <laughs> one of the two. But it's actually, so whoa, it's that pull. <laughs> that pull that response that instantaneous response it's really quite surprising it's just you know having a properly it's almost i think the guy said he'd balance the carbs on this so i think the carbs are actually in pretty good shape and the fueling seems superb you know i've not noticed any areas where it's a bit fluffy or anything it's got the standard exhaust on it i've also got a scorpion end can so i may put the scorpion on it just to get a bit more volume because it's very quiet but it's super smooth it's like a bit of a sewing machine and that's a cliche but it's a very smooth engine absolutely love that so you've got very good pickup at the bottom mid-range is pretty strong as well i mean these bikes were known as sort of widow makers really because you could get tank slappers on a lot of people put aftermarket steering dampers on them because they can get a little bit wild so this this doesn't have that so i've got to be a little bit this may be a 25 year old bike but do not underestimate you know this is still a hell of a fast machine 150 horsepower i think 80 ish newton meters of torque but that bottom end is really really strong one thing i'm noticing is the brakes the brakes aren't fantastic so you've got a really fast bike with mediocre brakes obviously the brakes aren't radial so you've got non-radial brakes i mean they're okay but they feel quite wooden quite a wooden setup from that front end the rear brake is all right lock the back up <laughs> no abs here but uh it's, it's okay but it's nothing like a, a modern bike's brakes the riding position is quite extreme it's, it's definitely more wristy than those little super sport bikes we were riding the other day i fancy it's even a bit more wristy than the new r1 as well but we'll see when we do the comparison but there's quite a lot of weight on the wrist the seat is really nice really wide really well padded so it's very comfortable in the seat and the foot pegs are, are, are moderate as well the foot pegs also are, are not too high 
so it's just a little bit of wrist weight um, but apart from that you've got a lovely fit around this tank your legs my legs fit lovely on this tank I'm six foot two and 20 stone so I'm a big bugger but I feel like I fit on this this feels quite if it doesn't feel particularly large it does compared to those little super sports but it's got a nice sort of there's plenty of room on it I can't even the tail's miles away behind me I can move back quite a lot in the seat there's loads of room in the seat but it's just a little bit risky but apart from that it's actually surprisingly comfortable I don't know if the tires are any good on this they're not great so I'm going to take it a little bit steady I haven't been over the bike yet and checked it out properly so I'm going to be a little bit steady on it but it feels lovely to move around on really nice and when you do open it up it's got a load of pull a sort of load of pull below sort of 6,000 revs which is you know sort of you wouldn't really expect that obviously no quick shifter no blipper it's all manual the box feels quite a notchy especially sort of second first and second there's a little bit notchy feeling that could be age related could be age related and sort of mid-range it's a little bit a little bit vibe a little bit buzzy through the foot pegs perhaps you know again that could be age related that could be down to car balancing but i think it's probably just your usual sort of straight for buzziness a little bit but there's absolutely huge huge dollops of torque huge dollops of torque much more so than what you've got on like a modern straight four i mean that even pulls the wheel up a little bit over that crest i mean this bike was known as a a bit of a wheelie hooligan this machine you know is when the Yamaha bought this out it was the first sort of stacked gearbox so the gearbox was up high and it enabled the the engine to be much shorter and they could make the swinging arm longer so it's like the, the first bikes that did that and uh, yeah it's, it's got quite a short wheel, wheelbase I think this machine though which is why it's a bit of a wheelie hooligan but it's actually very very nice you know to actually sort of put throw it through here i haven't got a rev it i can use the torque i say it's only really the brakes which they let you think that they let you realize that it's a little bit of an older machine it's surprisingly good i mean this this formula was you know this was the bike which changed it all really this sort of launched that litre bike war in the in the in the noughties and that's you know this was the first sort of modern really modern i think feeling superbike and it still feels pretty darn good today to be honest you know i would never think this was 25 years old to ride it not in a million years there's the odd little knock i can hear the odd little knock as i go over bumps and stuff so it could be the headstock's a little bit loose by the brakes it doesn't clunk or anything but we need we need to go through the whole bike just to make sure there's anything uh <laughs> anything wrong with it but i mean even just riding around you know below 6,000 revs it feels quick plenty of go there and then you can move around on it it is a lot of fun and I think surprisingly capable even just sort of doing this I mean look at that grand and a 4,000 revs this is a straight four that's insane I've also got to say a massive thank you to Bike Shore as you probably noticed the last month or so there's been some Bike Shore pop-ups and, and sponsorship on the channel well, remember a couple of months ago I said, you know, I want to perhaps quit my day job and go full-time with YouTube. And I mentioned that, you know, there was redundancies at work. Well, unfortunately, I wasn't included in those redundancies. I've heard that someone in, in Germany has come away with half a million pound redundancy, half a million euros. Half a million euros in redundancy. What? So it wasn't just the fact that I've been there so long and I'd be quite expensive because they're, they're paying people half a, half a million euros. So yeah, so I didn't get made redundant, which ugh, was a little bit of a shame. But, you know, the plan will be now is to go three days a week next year 
and you know I want to say a massive thanks to Bike Shore because I'm sort of bringing Bike Shore on and they're sort of they're seeing the value of the content I'm doing and they're sort of been a part of it you know with their with their support and help then that three days a week on the day job and two dedicated days to, to YouTube next year I can make that happen so huge thanks to Bike Shore there's a link in all the description of all the videos so if you do get a quote go through my link and then they know it's coming from my channel you know the referral sort of thing I need to get a quote so um, yeah if if you wouldn't mind when your insurance is due click on that link give them a ring and see what they can do for you because one thing with bike sure i'm gonna give you a little bit of a sales pitch now i've got over and i but they're you know they pride themselves on being able to quote everybody so if you've got some particular circumstances or you've got multiple bikes or you're looking for sort of limited time cover they're very flexible so they can really sort of work a policy around your requirements that's what they sort of pride themselves on doing so when you when your insurance is due Give them a ring, see what they can do for you. To ensure the R1 with them is £280. I was quite surprised. You know, this to insure is actually more expensive than my K8 GSXR. I guess it's the reputation of this machine. You know, that original R1. So they still demand a bit of an insurance premium on the R1, even compared to like the K8 GSXR. So I guess it's because they're a little bit of a winner, even though the value of this is quite low they're known as being a little bit naughty so yeah the insurance is a little bit higher on this bike compared to uh, my 2008 GSX-R which is sark it's saying it's mine it's no longer mine is it it's sold but onwards and upwards so yeah massive thanks to bike sure for, for coming on board and supporting me and, and hopefully we'll be able to build sort of a long-term relationship with them and they can help make my dreams come true next year when I try and go to three days a week or less if I could bit of a clunk into second I know that can be a bit of a, a weak point of these bikes but it's not that bad I feel all the leaves in the road yeah, it does want to lie down it's very nice to move around on. Like I say, the tyres are a little bit under. I don't know how old these tyres are. I think it's got some old Pirelli Diablos on it. I'm probably going to change the rubber. So I'm not pushing too hard because I don't... I don't trust the rubber. You know, I've not got full confidence in the bike yet. But I can tell already it's, it's bloody brilliant, isn't it? Just goes to show you, you don't need to spend 20 grand on a bike to have fun. I don't think I could push this as hard as what I could a modern bike. You know, so it's, it's, it's 80% there, as good as a modern bike. And on the road, you'd, you'd probably keep up with something on a modern bike. But it's that extra 20% I think you've got with a modern, a modern sports bike, where this is perhaps lacking a little bit. 20% that extra little 20% on top with the handling the performance you know the braking and just, just everything the way it feels and the feedback and the suspension the way it works it's just you know it's 80% as good as a modern machine I would say so as I mentioned the plans for this bike is going to be go through it do some maintenance related jobs on it check things out on it take all the fairing off have a look at it underneath see if I can spot anything which might need to be taken care of do a couple of videos those workshop videos I'll do videos obviously for the channel uh, then we'll do some riding videos on it like I say comparison with the new R1 and then I will be sort of raffling this bike off I don't know too many details yet I'm talking to you know, one of these raffle companies and we're going to start working together and then basically I'll, I'll raffle this off and then I'm going to buy something else you know equipped with the money equivalent sort of value and then do the same thing with that bike so i'm thinking maybe that the 990 smt the original 990 smt could be a good one to uh to get hold of i've never ridden one of those bikes i've never ridden you know that's what I want. bikes a little bit special a milli perhaps the uh, rsv milli i'd like to try one of those and do the same thing with that and go through and, and give it and, and raffle it all off the SMT 
anything else you want to suggest that you'd like to see on the channel and um, we'll see if we can make it happen I love the old school gauges you've got a digital speedo that must have been one of the first bikes which had a digital speedo when did digital speedos come in it was around this time wasn't it maybe a couple of years before but not much my 98 blade had a digital speedo it was around that time wasn't it digital speedo but of course you've got an analog rev counter you can't beat an analog rev counter superb but even sort of pottering along in a high gear really easy I say so much grunt even in top gear really easy so that the brakes aren't as good as a modern bike but I'm getting used to them they actually feel not too bad now suspension feels nice as well actually it feels quite plush it doesn't feel crashy I mean, I, I say I don't know if it's ever been overhauled maybe it's worth well maybe getting the suspension overhaul but it actually feels very nice I'm not sure I'll bother because it actually feels very nice I think it may have been it's obviously been done within the 25 years all in all really quite impressive three and a half thousand pounds you've got a classic icon of a motorcycle a bike when you park up at the meet you'll get some people looking at it you'll get some attention people saying why didn't you get the red and white one <laughs> too much money mate plus I think the blue looks better so uh, yeah it's, it's it's very good though it just goes to show you you don't have to spend fortunes on new bikes you know this is a fast competent bike for three and a half thousand pounds so there we go my new r1 and you will be seeing more of this there'll be some workshop videos on it so if you're interested in this then of course give me a like give me a subscribe if you're not already subscribed and this machine will be raffled off to somebody so as soon as i have the details of that i'll let you know because it'd be nice to sort of get that going you know as we do work on this machine and and you know, as, as you get invested in this bike as you get emotionally invested in this bike you can actually buy buy tickets to own it of course it will only be uk only you know there's not going to be overseas i'm afraid so be uk only but uh, more details on that when i have them and in the meantime take care ride safe and i'll see you on the next one cheers guys